Assalamu alaikum, buddy. There is no question that more hands on a homestead helps the work go easier. Camila and I had the job of heaping up straw in the goat shelter to make sure they were warm before the weather turned. And soon enough it did. This was Luna's first snow. This is the chicken's first winter. Let's see how they're managing in the snow, especially since we opted to take that roof off. It seems to be all right. Just gonna have to make sure that their water isn't frozen. And it is. It's looking frozen pretty good. There we go. And if we're going to talk about what makes work easier, well, we should point out that rough weather don't. But that don't mean it's all bad. There is plenty of fun to be had. Yes! <laughs> That right there is our good friend, Omer. I met him for the first time this past summer at D&T Grom, our annual surf camp that we put on in collaboration every year with Kooks and Kahunas, a Muslim surf club based out of Southern California. This was his first time visiting us at Camp One, and we talked about a lot of things, about surfing, wind, the tides, nature, wilderness, and how it all works together to elevate our spirituality. He's been doing a lot of climbing lately, and I was excited to hear what he had to say about that. Mainly I climb in gyms, and uh, yeah, we, we go out, and um, they literally show me the ropes, yeah, how to yeah, tie the knots, yeah. how to set up the anchors and all that stuff. I like the fear component, which sounds crazy, but I like the self-mastery. Mm. And um, I feel like controlling yourself in like, scary situations where you're very fearful. There's a meditative aspect to it because there's a lot of self-talk, there's a lot of breathing, there's a lot of understanding that the only way I'm getting out of this is if I focus and kind of work through this problem, mm -hmm. right? And that's how I uh, view rock climbing. Monday night was game night and time to dive back into our Dungeons and Dragons campaign that we've been running at this point for a few years. This is the story of Irene, the Triton fighter, daughter of the sea, of Katala, the dragonborn sorcerer and deputy of the Lord's Alliance, of Moon, the tabaxi rogue who's also a sucker for a pretty face, of Onyx, the silent Asimar paladin and protector of friends, of Tara Waywalket, the four gnome who tried this very evening to tame an owl bear, and finally this is the story of Orilo, the halfling barbarian with a chip on his very diminutive shoulder. As always, wicked and destructive forces threatened the peaceable inhabitants of Faerun, and our heroes had their work cut out for them. As did we the following morning. Luke and Ethan had just come back with a truck bed full of split logs they had picked up from a local woodcutter about 30 minutes up the road. We spent the early part of the morning stacking those logs for the stove before we headed out to the cold and wet paddock feed our animals. And here's something you may not know. Goats actually have perfectly round pupils in the dark. The next day called for rain, and it was all we could do to reassure our animals with a little extra love and attention. They would be cooped up all day in that paddock, in the wet, and the slop, 
we wouldn't have the opportunity to take A.D. for his walk or to let the goats forage. And with that wet weather coming, I knew that this would be the best time to harvest the Chinese radish we'd planted several months back. Once back inside, I separated the greens from the roots. The original plan was to use these in some kind of a ferment. I guess we'll just have to see what Aisha has planned. Winston's got a few more days on his antibiotics. But as always, Luna's ready to go. Good morning, A.D. How you doing, buddy? It seems there's been a change in goat society. You'll notice here that trouble is with her two kids. And Floor is with her two kids. And out here on his own is Little Man. That's Floor's son from a previous relationship. And then he used to be welcome at the same trough, but not anymore. I don't know what this means, but I suspect when it comes to culling the herd, Little Man will go first. The rains have come and gone, for now anyway, and that's an opportunity for Camila and Anissa to take A.D. for a walk. Mm -hmm. Now all these chores you've seen in this video, you've seen in our other videos, but what's different here are the people doing them. We are so appreciative of the extra hands. We can all use help now and again, just like how Aisha changed up the chicken feed to help these girls lay even in this cold, dark winter. Okay. Four, 